So we have just talked about the nuclear port. We have talked about briefly about its structure. Now let's talk about the signal present on the proteins that target those proteins to the nucleus. Let's look at that. First of all, I would like to point out this is the basically signal. This is the sequence uh, of amino acids that targets proteins to the nucleus. Again, I would urge that you don't dwell on memorizing these signal sequences. It's just basically I would like you to concentrate on the concepts. When proteins are experimentally extracted from the nucleus and reintroduced into the cytosol, this is usually can be done, for example, by microinjection, even the very large ones reaccumulate into the nucleus very efficiently. So there has to be a mechanism or there has to be a signal that is recognized by cellular machinery and that signal and that machinery are basically responsible for selectively importing those proteins into the nucleus. The selectivity of uh, this nuclear import process resides in the nuclear localization signals or basically NLS which are present only in the nuclear proteins. The signals have been precisely defined in numerous nuclear proteins using DNA recombinant technologies. Uh, for example, using uh, recombinant technologies, we can delete signal and see whether the protein is still going to the nucleus or not. I'll show you uh, an experiment which does precisely that. Here it is. So here what we have done uh, is immunofluorescence experiment. Uh, these are the micrographs, images showing cellular location of SV40 T virus antigen. So the virus, this virus has a T antigen and it has, uh, we have two versions of this antigen. This is the normal version of this antigen. It contains the nuclear import signal and here is a mutated version of this protein in which one of the lysines has been changed with threonine. So you can see the results in when the T, when we had the normal T antigen of this virus, it accumulated in the nuclei of the cells because it had the NLS in the normal form. However, in the mutated form, you can see the, the cells, just the, only the cytoplasms have this T antigen. Uh, by the way, this T antigen was also labeled with the fluorochrome, which means we made this T antigen a glowing molecule which could be detected under certain light conditions. So this is how we are detecting it. We are basically, we have tagged this particular T antigen and here we can see that the T antigen is present only in the cytosol and this black void you can see here is, is basically the location of the nucleus. So this protein, if we change one amino acid of this protein, this protein does not enter the nucleus. So this is how important the sequence of the amino acids in the NLS is in getting a protein into the nucleus. The mechanism of macromolecular transport across a nuclear pore complex is different from the transport mechanism involved in protein transfer across the membranes of other organelles because in other organelles folded protein cannot enter that particular organelle. However, in nucleus, the protein, a fully folded protein, can enter through that pore uh, because that pore is aqueous and it is spanning the, both the lipid bilayers. So because this existence of this aqueous channel, fully folded proteins can get into the nucleus. In other cases, for example, proteins being exported into mitochondria, they first have to unfold, they have to become linear, and then they have to find their respective channel or respective hole in the mitochondrial membrane and then it snakes through into the, uh, into the mitochondria. A newly formed ribosomal subunit is transported out of the nucleus as an assembled particle. Because these ribosomes are assembled in the nucleosome, it will be pointless to assemble them in the nucle nucleosome and then disassemble them in the process of transporting them to the cytosol. So uh, this is one big exception about our rule of protein transport to different organelles. Nucleus is the only organelle in which fully folded proteins can enter.
So we have talked about these uh, issues already, but very large particles transversing pores seem to constrict as they squeeze. So although we have said the diameter of the that aqueous channel formed by the nuclear porins present in the nuclear membrane is about nine nanometers. However, even larger particles, assembled protein particles, can also get through it. It seems like there is some restructuring of the nuclear nuclear porin proteins that are forming that channel, and that allows even larger particles to get through. Here is an experiment I would like to talk about. Here you can see these black dots. These are basically gold particles. After these gold particles are injected in the cell, the photographs were taken using an electron microscope. Uh, what is so special about these gold particles is that these gold particles have been attached to a NLS or nuclear localization sequence, uh, which will allow these particles to enter the nucleus. So we have injected cells with these gold particles attached to NLS, and then we basically fix cells at different stages. After 10 minutes, for example, you can see the gold particles are assembling or getting are present near the nuclear pore. This is the nuclear pore I have just circled. After 30 minutes, you can see some of these gold particles are trying to get through the nuclear pore. However, in 40 minutes or 50 minutes, you can see some of these gold particles here, the arrows pointing to at the gold particles. You can see them actually entering inside. They are present inside the nucleus. So here's a visual graphic example of nuclear transport, which was done in sort of a time lapse manner. So we have uh, talked about uh, the nuclear localization sequence. We will continue our discussion of nuclear import in the next module.